Ti bu buch roll call. Hi, my name is Seth. I don't do drugs, just a little meth. Don't talk to me. I'm the DM. I'll kill your characters, and you won't see them again. Roll call, Jacob version. Go. Hi, my name is Zippy, and I play Jacob. I mean the other way around. And my name is, <laughs> <laughs> and I am dead. Currently in this episode. Well, maybe, maybe not. And then pass it to Connor. Roll call, <laughs> Connor version. Go. Uh, hi, my name is Connor. I have no tempo. I don't know how we make any music for the show. Roll call, <laughs> Adam version. Go. Hi, you know my name. It's, it's Adam and Normandy, but we're the same. Uh, I'm not off to a great start. Uh, th- that's a great redo. Roll call. <laughs> Roll call. Boochie, boo, boochie. We are the CBTD team. Cha. <laughs> Brutal. And I'm the bard, everyone. So new listeners, get ready. <laughs> everyone should be very <laughs> impressed because I didn't write mine out beforehand at all. I just feel the glares into your monitors as I say that. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't glare because I just realized I uh, don't know where my dice are. <laughs> okay, we'll find those, and we are cheaper by the dungeon. Uh, my name is Seth. I'm the dungeon master, alongside with Jacob. Hi, Connor, who should be back now. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> and Adam. Hi. Good to be here. Thanks for having me on. Can't wait to get started. First time. You said... <laughs> First time caller. Long time yeah. listener. Have I won the $500 yet? <laughs> the 500 <laughs> for calling in? If you answer this trivia question, I'll give... Oh, if you answer this trivia question, I'll give it to you. Okay. Any of you can answer this trivia question as I Google it myself. <laughs> okay. When it's- was the first... Dungeons and Dragons book released. 1983 by Gary Gygax. Is that right? Any other guesses? 1974. 1978. Gary Gygax is correct. 1974, legitimately. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not even joking. I I honestly thought you cheated, but you answered too quick for that to be real. (laughs) Yeah, 1974. Congrats. I know my D&D history. Well, I got the name. <laughs> yeah, you got the what name. Well, it's you, you get... You, the prize you get is a recap. Oh, Let's go. Right. Well, they have to leave the call then. I'm the only one who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a team sport. Oh, okay. All right. So, last time on Cheaper by the Dungeon, we were in a coliseum where bugs were infiltrating. The whole tournament was basically over. King Veal was slain. Their head was chopped off. Uh, that was two episodes ago, actually. But in the last episode, the team each had their own fight. Darien versus a bee swordsman, who he had to do with, like, he had to fight with his fists, uh, per Draken's request. Uh, Norman versus this butterfly illusionist. And Zippy and Apophis together, uh, versus a dung beetle. And it went pretty badly. Uh, Norman scared his butterfly away, and they teleported away. Uh, Darien drank the blood of his enemies and Zippy and Apothis uh, basically Apothis was down and out, he was cold, he was dying Zippy made the poop realm and also covered his eyes and made him start rolling this dung ball and the dung ball just got bigger and bigger and bigger until the team got chased out of the Colosseum while the big dung ball, dirt, sand Colosseums now, it was basically like Katamari Damacy that game uh, it was sucking up everything, and it was chasing them down as they were running along this bridge to get to the castle. Um, and the team was running. They had the chameleon that was trying to kill Apophis. They had the sleepy slash dead Apophis in their arms. But oh no! Zippy and Norman got sucked into the ball, along with the chameleon and their stuff, and the head of King Veal that Norman p- picked up. And it slammed into the castle wall, but stopped. And only on the other side was Apothis, who now woke up, and Darien and Draken. The tarantula hawk, uh, insectoid being that slayed King Veal, was walking past in the halls of the castle. And Apothis looked at you, Darien, 
and told you to get little dude, aka Zippy and Norman, out of the ball. And they went to go fight the tarantula hawk. And they're battling now in the hallway behind you as you stare at this wall of dirt and sand. What do you do, Darian? Okay, so they've just run away. He asked me to get uh, Zippy Norman. So I'm going to turn around to the door that we kind of dove through. It, is the door still closed behind us? So I got to try and like open it up. No, the door is blasted wide open, and all there is is just a wall of dirt and sand and calcium bits. Okay, I want to I want to go over and start just kind of like digging into the the dirt wall. How how compacted is it now that it's kind of broken through the door? It's pretty compacted. You're digging and scraping away, and you're getting a little bit, but like this dirt has been packed. Okay, um, I'm gonna use a uh, my planar warrior, um, to. Make my next uh, attack force damage and uh, still kind of using my fist. I want to do kind of like a force punch to try and hopefully blow some of the dirt apart and not hurt the guys if they're close enough. (laughs) As you pull your fist back, you hear the voice at your hip. Kid, stop. What? Why? They're, They're stuck in there. They could be suffocating. I have a new challenge. What? Save them without anything. That's... Just use your raw strength. This... This... I don't know if this is a really good time. Things have kind of, uh, ramped up a little bit, haven't you? Can't you really see that? Kid. If you can't save people with your raw strength, you'll never be able to save them in those crucial moments. Your spells run out, kid. (sighs) Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna take a second... And just kind of take a step back and kind of focusing, take a deep breath and try and punch into the dirt to try and try and break through the compacted layer. Okay, roll roll just like your attack damage for your unarmed. Oh, well then it's if it's if it's for unarmed, it's just flat. Um yeah. it's just a one uh one plus four. So five damage total. Okay. You punch. And even as you punch, you feel the sand just compact even more underneath your fist. Okay, I uh, on on my attack action, I can take two attacks, and uh, if you're going unarmed, I believe you can use a bonus action too for an attack. So I'm going to just three punch, boom, boom, boom. Okay. You see, some sand and dirt is crumbling off, but still. This is a huge wall, and you're just a little man punching. As a, as that feeling of of feeling small kind of washes over me, I kind of think about everything that's kind of gone on over the past little while and think about my friends being stuck in there, and I'm just going to keep punching harder and harder. And I'm just going to start punching okay. faster and as fast as I can to try and break through as uh, some of that that stifled emotion is breaking through a little bit to try and break through this dirt wall. You are punching. Five, five, five. And you hear Draken. Kid, they're dying. They can't breathe in there. They might already be unconscious. No, they're not. No, they're not. And I'm going to keep going. Harder. Come on, kid. Time's running up. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, start not holding back. Like, you know that subconscious part of your mind that tries to prevent you from from, like, hurting yourself or inflicting pain on yourself. I'm gonna try and push through that and punch even harder. You feel like your mental barriers are just breaking as your fists are just becoming harder. Your knuckles are becoming bloody from punching this wall. Five, 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 six. Kid! Dig deep! (sighs) I'm going to wind up for like a really big like falcon punch here and just put everything I've got into it to try and break through this. No, they're not. And roll a d20. Uh, I'm going to use a luck point. (laughs) Okay. Because I feel like narratively it calls for that. (sighs) Okay, that's much better. Um, Am I adding anything to it? Well, you can add your strength if you want. Okay, yeah, that's a 20 not natural then. That's 16 plus Okay. Four. You hit. You see lots of sand starts crumbling, but it's still just solid. 
He's like, Cade, come on! Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't... Kid, listen! Listen to me! Look at me! Hold my fistball up! Okay. You're an Eladrin. Switch seasons. I need you to get mad! And I'm just gonna start punching again, and just like rapid punching, and with every single punch, you see a flare on the knuckles, like where the blood is kind of breaking through the skin. You see the skin color actually changing, and it starts flashing, as you see the emotion is just welling up within Darian, and all of these things that are happening, and he's just gonna punch harder, and harder, and harder, and harder, and flash! He flashes to gold as he switched to his summer season, and you see him punch even faster, and he starts screaming, and yelling, and just letting it all out, breaking through, because he's not gonna let his friends suffer and die in this moment, and he's punching and punching and giving it everything he has. You see your punch, you're just slamming your fist, and the wall is shaking. And you hear Draken just saying, Yes, yes, anger, more. And you're, bo, 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 bo. and you bring your fist back once, and you just hear him say, No, Zephyr Strike. I activate Ze uh, Zephyr Strike at second level. Yes. You see, do, do, do. like it's. It seems like it's going through the sound barrier because all of a sudden your regular ass punches just got juiced and your anger is making you somehow stronger and just before it collides we cut to Zippy and Norman. Your eyes open and you're not in the ball. You look around and you see you're in a black sea and you're standing atop the waves as there's this blue giant illuminescent tree in the background. You're in the dream plane. And Zippy, you look over and you see Norman. And Norman, you look over and see Zippy. Oh. I think I died again. Is this what it looks like? <laughs> uh, now, DM, do I recall this place? You have never been here. Okay. Um, this is definitely not what I thought it would be like inside a giant ball of dirt. Now I understand why you Lapine live underground. It's it's very different down no, here. No, it doesn't look like this. This is different. Slightly. Where are we, Zip? I don't know. We were just at the Coliseum, and then we ran, and then I got scooped right up. Wait, I was carrying someone. Uh, do, did that one other character that like, got scooped? Is he, is he in here? The, like, uh... Oh, the chameleon. chameleon. You look around the dream plane where you are right now, and you don't see the chameleon person. Uh-oh. You know, this feels a lot like that place where I was rowing a boat, and Royce grabbed it and tried to pull me into the deep. As you're saying this, Zippy, you're looking at Norman, and you see coming out of the water behind him, whew, two large horns and they're slowly levitating like rising out of just standing still and upright like levitating and rising out of the water you see cracks of black obsidian skin with lava coursing through just as Norman's talking slowly rising up behind him I'm just so glad that that's all behind me you know never gonna really have to relive that memory they're so grateful for that you actually saved me in that whole situation so for, for which i'm a, a, extremely eternally grateful i don't really remember what you're talking about oh you you actually saved me it was in a a dream space um it was it was a lot like this and maybe it was just a dream that Dreams i had Dreams come and go for me but i usually remember the good ones that one for whatever reason must have been pretty traumatic it definitely was. Uh, I think we should try to wake up, though. That never, that never works. Uh, well, I could, I could pinch you. I could slap you or, or something. Oh, wait a minute. What, what about Viso? Viso, the god of dreams. Can you talk to him? Nah, they like nerfed me a couple seasons back. I can't really do much anymore. <laughs> the, the being, the Royce-like being behind Norman now is towering over Norman, just, like, uh, two feet taller than him. It is now fully, like, out of the water. I must notice him at this point. No, you're still talking to Zippy. <sighs> Great. 
the, you know, these conversations, they're really, you, we like to talk enough. You know, we spend all that time in that airship, but we're just so isolated in our rooms. You know, it's, it's so great to really, really get a chance to connect and tell me more about your experiences. With yeah, me. well, we haven't, we haven't Although had a lot really... of talk, time to talk since you got back from the dead. So sit down. How's it going? Oh, <laughs> good. I am going to just squat down without looking behind me. I'm just going to sit. Wait, are we standing on water? Uh, yeah, you're standing on the water. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of go like a Kimbo, like all my weight on one leg. I'm going to say, well, you know, point of clarification, I I didn't really die. Um, I just went under in, into the deep. Um, I don't really know what that means, though. Um, it's a tricky thing to explain. You know, a lot of it's even foggy even for me. But You feel a hand. Land on your shoulder. Sometimes I feel like it. It still haunts me today. There's, like a weight on there's me. There's something on your shoulder there. I can't really tell if it's normal or not. Well, that's exactly what I mean. I feel like ever since I came back, there has been this weight, and I thought I was hiding it so well. But the fact that you're talking about it now, oh, I feel so exposed. I no, there's something on your shoulder. I look down at my shoulder, the wrong shoulder. No, there's there's nothing there. The other one. Oh, this one. You see this black obsidian hand with lava cracks and these sharp claws on their hand. And you look up and see the face of Royce. And they're just staring blankly at you. Ew, it's ugly. It is. I'm going to. So I'm looking up and he's looking down at me from behind me, right? Yeah. I am going to turn around and take his hand and just not forcefully but I'm firmly take it off of me and I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna say zip stand back wait has that thing been on you before I've never noticed that stand back zip okay back up I'm I'm just gonna look at Royce and I'm gonna say this is happening sooner than I expected they just stare blankly at you they do not respond and they outstretch their hand as if welcoming a handshake and you just start feeling zippy and norman boom boom like your head is just kind of like vibrating zippy you would recognize this feeling is the feeling of like you know, something on the outside world affecting you. Your real body, not your dream one. Wait, something's going on. It, it's not right. Something's shaking, but not not this place. I'm not even focusing on that. Or could, do I even notice that? Probably not. Um, I'm looking at Royce. And that's it. May not have gone to the bathroom before we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Boom. Oh no! Boom. Zip. Zippy, just as you say no, Zip. you're out of the dream space, and you just start noticing it now, Norman. The booms, and you see Roy still with her hand outstretched. Do you take it or do you not? Is Zip gone? Yeah. Oh, Zip is gone. Yes. I'm gonna look at him and say, Royce, go to hell. You see they lower their hand. And... You disappear from the dream space. And... You see, Zippy, you're like in the ball of of dirt. You you wake up, your eyes... you, You can't really open your eyes. You can tell you're in dirt because you feel it all around you. But the sand is shaking and the vibrations are making it so you can actually like move a little bit. It's loosening it because it's all kind of like slowly coming apart. But you can move a little bit as you feel these tremors just shaking the ball. What do you do, Zippy? Is that is anyone beside me? Like I see can I see Norman? You don't see Norman. You can see or like feel a little bit of the chameleon. You can see what well, you can't see. You can, yeah, you can sense a little bit of the chameleon is nearby. Um, some of your stuff is also nearby, uh, floating in the ball of sand. I was just hoping that King Veal's head was right in front of him, like, <laughs> first thing he saw. <laughs> but it's like loose. It's very hard to move, but you can still like manage to like 
it's it's like you're in quicksand and you're like you know shaking about uh i want to call my uh carpet towards me see if it can help me like wiggle out of here uh it should still have the chameleon in it but i'm wondering if it can just like help wiggle around if i have like a link with it still okay try and say alakazam with dirt all around your head (laughs) (laughs) alakazam (laughs) <laughs> uh, you try and your connection is strong so it knows your voice and can interpret your situation and it's like it's like slowly it turns itself into a little bit of a drill it's just slowly spinning it's rugness and it's like slowly excavating the dirt but it's pretty slow because it's a rug well uh, I mean I'm just gonna start sh- shuffling my way my whole body to like towards where the carpet is to try and like bridge our two like caves here. Uh, roll a strength check. You're not good at those. Oh no. Um, I got an eleven minus one, so a ten. That's not like you. <laughs> For strength <laughs> checks, strength? yes, You're... it is. <laughs> You're worming about. And normally you're good at digging from your Bramble Patch days, but the dirt is just so surrounding you and shaking in the sand, and you're trying to claw, but it's so slow you can't reach the carpet, and you're losing oxygen again. Oh, God. You can barely breathe. I will give you one last action to try and escape. Uh, you know, I'm going to see if freedom of movement is going to help me in this situation and allow me to kind of swim out of here. Um... Okay, <laughs> just swimming through the sand. Um, yeah, I'll cast that on myself. If you can walk on water in the dream space, can't just swim through land. Uh, <laughs> land shark. Let's let's uh, let's see. I want you to roll uh, a d twenty and add your dexterity. Uh, so it's a thirteen plus four, so that's a seventeen. Okay. I'll say you are like digging, clawing. You can barely see. Sometimes you can open your eyes now and you can see the ball is starting to like crack and holes are starting to form. Light is starting to somewhat seep through, but you're still like drowning in dirt and you're moving and digging and clawing as your bramble patch skills are coming into play. Uh, They weren't before because you were lazy. Uh, (laughs) But now you're like, oh, I might die. Uh, But you're digging and you are clawing and you grab, you feel something. And you can tell this is Norman's arm. And Norman, you wake up, and you're surrounded by dirt. Is there anything you want to do? Who's that? You can't talk because there's dirt in your mouth. (laughs) I feel it. Do I feel fur? You feel the fur. Okay, I'm going to clasp my hand in his because I'm assuming I can't see him. No. I'm going to clasp my hand in his, and I just got to double check. I can't talk at all, Seth. I can't say one word. No. Dirt in your mouth. Dirt mouth. Because I cannot cast a spell without speaking. (laughs) I mean, you can mumble it. I'll let you mumble. (laughs) I'm... Okay. I'm... While holding his hand in my... With one hand, I'm going to bring my other hand to my mouth. And I'm just going to try, just to, as if, like, we're COVID coughing, like, into our elbow. I'm going to put my elbow, like, my mouth to my elbow just so I can speak. And I'm going to ca- say the the right words for Dimension Door. Okay. Where and do you want to add Dimension Door to? I don't know about this space. I've never seen it. So I would have to teleport to a place... That I know. Oh no, I can be a place you see or a place you can visualize or one you can describe by stating distance and direction. So just trying to go off the base of like gravity and and I'm just going to say 100 feet ahead. Okay. You feel a door appears just beneath you. And Zippy, you're holding on to Norman's arm and you feel all of a sudden you're falling and... You both fall through the door with a bunch of dirt coming to and it opens and you fall into the palace hallway and Santa's like pouring out on top of you uh, as you like stand up and and you roll away both of you and you get out. But the dimension door is just like funneling dirt in 
and you're uh across the hall it's like a an intersection it's like at the other end of the hall you see darian pounding uh with his new skin color just pounding on the dirt wall you guys are there with your little dirt pile and in between you and them you see apothis fighting the tarantula hawk and apothis is just like yeah come on come on and they're like sucker punching them and you can see their thorax is just like breaking and snapping they're like "Ah!" and then it digs its like scythe arms uh its its little arm daggers into apothis's shoulder and then its wings flutter and they go flying down the hall into the throne room so to the left um and you look straight ahead and you can see Darian. Darian, you are just punching the dragon. It's like, more, more! Is this after Zephyr Strike has gone off? Yes. <laughs> nothing nothing happened. You can happened. see the wall of sand is like rippling, and you're doing some serious damage and excavating it. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened. I'm going to whisper to Zephyr, do, do we go back in there so that he doesn't feel bad? Because he's obviously trying to save us. Oh, man, he's like, he even like went like full Nova. He went like golden and... <laughs> Do we just wait here? Or what are, I'll what get are, them. It's so awkward. I'll get them out of here. Don't yeah. get them. Yeah. <laughs> They're I, it, probably dying. I, I just assumed he probably went to fight instead of save us, so... Um, maybe we should just crawl back in? Here, I can cast Freedom of Movement on him as well. Well, <laughs> how, how high up is the hole above us, the dimension door? It, it's not very far. You, you could climb in. Uh, it's still pouring sand out, though, and it's making it look like it's doing more damage to the ball than it really should be. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, you know what? Honestly, is the best policy. D- Darian! Darian, hey! Uh, he's, he's in the zone. He doesn't hear it. He keeps punching. Oh. Uh, well, Zip, he looks pretty banged up. And I'm gonna start making my way towards Darian. Yeah, he looks like he's straight. He's giving it his all, too, right now. Let's head over. More kid! Come on! Feel the anger! Uh, Darian! Darian! I'm gonna... L- what? Lizard man! What? What? What are you? Hey, I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder. Why are you? Why hey. are you over here? I just—I've been trying to rescue you. I—I I wasted a whole spell slot for you guys. Oh. I'm—I'm I'm gonna put my one hand is on his shoulder, and then the other hand I'm gonna grab like like the side of his face, and I'm gonna put my forehead against his. What? I'm gonna say. It's all right. We're okay. It's uh, okay. Uh, great. And I straighten up. Okay. Okay. Uh, the. Are you okay, uh, Darian? Really someone was someone yelling I, at you. I, you look. You look upset. And we I, almost match. Like I'm tan. You're gold. Yeah, I, I. I got a little worked up over here. I was trying to get you guys out of there. I didn't know. You were already out of the out of the dirt, okay? Uh, Actually, do you know what? Don't sell yourself short. We were in a crazy dream space, and we're pretty sure it was your pounding on the wall that woke us up. Otherwise, we would have suffocated and died. So, really, thank you for saving our lives. If you weren't so nagging, we wouldn't have ever been gotten out of there. <laughs> Persistence is the is the word he means, I, I think. See, kid, it worked. Just have to believe an old dragon. Your training's paying off. Well, I, I don't know if that worked in the way that you anticipated, but it, I mean... No, I knew it would loosen the dirt and made freedom of movement and dimension door out of you there. You throw enough at the wall and it'll something will stick. This guy gets it. <laughs> okay, well, 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 you guys are out of here now. We gotta, we gotta go catch up to Apophis. That's a... Now, hold uh, on, I mean, hold on. Must we do that? He, he was fighting that tarantula hawk. Darian, you do not look fit to fight a fly. <laughs> Bug people. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but more importantly, we have a mission here to get the the flames. Apophis made his own decision. Do we do we really want to risk our lives to try to help him? When I, I mean, he threw himself at that tarantula hawk to save us. I was in there with him, and he oh. he could have left, but he chose to take him on, and he asked me to save you guys. I'm not I'm not going to run away from that. You hear a shriek come from the throne room. Do you just hear, ah, ah, dude! Oh! We gotta move now. He sounds like he's doing fine. Let's take our time. Let's take a short rest. Let's go now. And I start running. Okay, I am gonna give, as we as we run, I'm gonna give Darren my last healing potion. Here, I'm take gonna... this. 
I'm gonna chug it and run. Thank you. So obviously you're gonna be back to full health after this. Six. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you all run into the room. You turn at the hallway and you run down. And the throne room appears and just through these doors it opens up. You can see it's a wide room with these large stone pillars on either side of the wall. Like, there's just kind of like column after column scattered throughout, and then there's a main laneway that leads to this large kind of circular emerald serpent like floor thing where it's like there's emerald serpents throughout the the hallway leading up here. Uh, Just the jewels are in the ground and then you see this large two-headed one it's like two snakes consuming each other at the tail and it forms this circle for a large emerald throne on an elevated platform at the other end um but there's lots of columns to your left and right and you can see standing in the middle of this circle is apophis still fighting the tarantula hawk but you see their left arm the one with the emerald tattoo, the kachow arm, is on the floor, not attached to their body. And they're still duking it out with one arm, just still fighting. But the tarantula hawk looks like it's getting the upper edge. Draken, permission to use weapons. Kid, you've listened to me enough today. Go for it. I immediately grab and throw my dancing blade forward directly at the tarantula hawk for an attack. Okay. Roll to hit. Apophis, no! Uh, that's a 19. Uh, 11 plus 8. Okay. That hits. Okay. So that's going to be uh, 12 damage total. Okay. You see, you cast and make the dancing blade move, and it flies through the air, just twirling, and shh, hits into the tarantula hawk, and they go, ah! And they flail back off of Apophis and Apophis like backs up a little bit and they catch their breath and they turn around they're like guys stay back this this is out of your league I can tell especially you little dude you need more gains (laughs) (laughs) Apophis must be protected you're not okay Uh, in, in this kerfuffle can I run to hide behind a column out of sight yep okay I'm gonna slink off to the left and hide behind a column and I'm going to, wh- wh- while they're talking, and I'm going to cast Disguise Self to look like Baby Beef. You look like Baby Beef. You see you're wearing the, the gown, the robes, and you have the lion head, the glorious mane. And you're, you look like Baby Beef, King Veal. Okay. And I'm going to step out calmly towards continuing towards the left so I'm kind of going clockwise at least the way I picture it in the room so that I'm a little further away than from Darian and Zippy but I'm on I'm towards the left of Apophis and the tarantula hawk does that make sense yeah please roll a perception check okay is he already in the room alive 13 plus 4 17 you notice behind the emerald throne Reaching around is a similar robed being to yourself. <laughs> you see this f- furry arm come around and peeking out. You see there's no head. There's a stump from where they've been beheaded. You can see they're reaching around slowly to touch something on their throne. What? Okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to try my best to stay focused. I'm going to put my thumb and finger on mouth and whistle to get the tarantula hawk's attention. You see the tarantula hawk for a second peeks its ears up and looks over in your direction. And I'm going to say, in my best baby beef voice, I'm going to say, aren't I the one you want? You see their eyes flare and they go, you are not dead? They screech and they ignore Apophis completely and they go to jump and they're flying and you see the arm reach around the throne and slam onto the throne and all of a sudden 
a green barrier from the snakes, the two snake circle that are eating each other. It just, this force field goes up and it slams into the wall. And Apophis uses this moment to grab his arm and he flings it around. Uh, it's just his forearm. He still has his like bicep pretty much, but uh, throws the forearm around and is like having it in a chokehold kind of. Uh, and he's like, come on, bro, come on. He has the upper hand now, Apophis, and is choking out the tarantula hawk. And you see all of you now coming from behind the throne, laughing, just going, oh, that was close. Whoa. And you see the robes kind of fall off and the stump head kind of rotates away. And you can see out from their back, kind of just behind their shoulder blades, comes a head of a dragon and a head of a goat. What? King Veal's a freaking chimera? What? Come on. What the heck? <laughs> Baby beef. And the dragon head just goes, oh, damn. Oh. Hey, thank you, fake King Veal over there. Damn, that was close. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to look at Darianism and say, I'm still Normandy. I just was doing a thing. What is going on? I don't know, but I really think that Tarantula Hawk needs to go down. And I want to draw my bow and just take two shots at it. While Apophis is holding no, him. Norman, I mean, I- we could question you. Norman, I'm I'm worried about about what Baby Beef can do now. We, I feel like you and I have to take care of him while Apophis and Darian take on the big thing. I mean, that's that's that sounds like cinematic cinematically well, that would be perfect. Can, Let's do we, it. We can probably do this, right? You and I, we're we're we can beat people up. Well, well Dar- I mean, we're the heavy lifters of the team, obviously. Yeah, well, Darian, Darian just flexes. He does the plot devices, and we do all the damage. All right, let's do it. I would suggest you heal Apophis first. Darian, what what was your attack rolls? Uh, that would be a 25 and uh, another 19. Both fly and ding! They collide with the barrier and fly off. The emerald flowing barrier is somewhat transparent, but you can see it's tinted everything in the circle is green. But it's just flowing upwards uh, and it's connecting to the ceiling. And you can see your arrows... Do not pierce, even with sick attack rolls like that. And you see King Veal just go, Well, one way to get rid of a bug, feed it to Ganala. Here we go. And he slams a button on his throne, and the inner circle that Apophis and the Tarantula Hawk are in starts sinking. And you can see Apophis kind of loses his grip, and the Tarantula Hawk backs away and sends Apophis flying. And they look like they're going to start fighting again on opposite ends of the of the circle. And it just sinks into the floor as like an elevator. So there's a barrier between us and the action going on right now? Like, like you can get around it to get to the throne and to King Veal. It's just in that one circle that's in front of the throne. Oh, I see. So it's literally a dome, like a cylinder. It's. I'm assuming it's basically meant if he's talking to like an audience that he doesn't like, he can trap them in there and then basically execute them. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. King Veal, stop! You're gonna kill Apophis too! He, he's fighting to, to save you! Do you all know what I do with Tournament of Ganala winners? You send them to Ganala! They, he's gonna end up there anyways if he won! How far away is the throne from us? Uh, it's about 100 feet. It's a very large throne room. Man, crap! <sighs> Seth, I'm gonna run up to the magical cylinder and I'm basically going to slam my hand on it, and I'm going to look down to see, because the floor with Apophis and the, ter- and the Tarantula Hawk is lowering. Can I see what's beneath the platform that they're on? You cannot see what's beneath the platform. It's like a very tight shaft for the elevator. Like, the the, the walls of the, the circle platform that they're descending on touches all the walls, so you can't see below it. Okay. Um, it's not like so an open space. slowly going down, yeah. Um, it's, it's clear that he's... Is he, like, pushing a button on the throne, or he's just touching the throne? He seems to be just, like, touching at the throne. Could be a button. Could be touch. Man, we gotta kill this guy. I'm going to activate Zephyr Strike, double my movement, and I'm going to zip around and close, like, get as close as I can. Um, I'm going to take a double double move action. 
I'm going to take the uh, dash action um, so I can move 120 feet. And I want to I want to tackle him. Like, I know like it's it's an action to dash, but I'm hoping I can like bonus action, just like run into him and try and tackle him over. Please make uh, a dexterity save, you and Zippy. That's also Zephyr Strike is again at um, uh, second level because I'm out of first level spells, guys. <laughs> I am I am running on fumes here. <laughs> I I used my last luck point for today <laughs> um, to to reroll my deck save, and uh, so that I I rolled a natural eighteen um, plus seven. So, 25. Okay. You see as you're charging towards, zipping towards King Veal, your dragon head turns around and they go, Okay, well, don't get to use this very often, but... You see their flames in their dragon mouth start billowing and billowing. And as you're charging towards, they stand near their throne and... This is unlike any dragon fire you've ever seen. It's massive and it like inflames the entire arena. You can see there's some spots behind the pillars where you can hide. Norman, you're okay behind the the barrier here because it can't wrap around that quickly. But Darian, you are blitzing towards it. Zippy, what did you get on your deck save? I got a 19 plus four, 23. Okay, you dive towards uh, a pillar to dodge this incoming flames and you but you both do a good job but you still take half damage which will be i'm gonna use absorb element as my reaction and uh gain resistance to it and i want to basically run through the flame with absorb element um like like still taking into account the dexterity save but try and like like dodge and absorb element to still close the gap through the flame okay um you are not taking damage, but you're going in and in. And Zippy, you want to absorb anything? <laughs> uh, no, and I don't appreciate the laugh there, DM, thinking I can't absorb things. <laughs> well, you take 12 damage. No, I wasn't done. I was going to say something. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I can't do anything. Um, well... I'm going to... I'll probably still take damage, but at the same time, I'm going to put on an item I do have uh, while I attempt to dodge. Grab my bag. Uh, I'm going to put on Grubby's Goggles. This is supposed to be like where you guys say, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grubby's Goggles allow me to um, like, uh, basically disable any feature on like a person. I'm wondering if the f- if his different heads count as different features on him, and so, like, if I can disable like hit one of his different heads going on. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could do that. Ha. Clutch. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Nice cell five. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no one else is giving me one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna. So that what the head he's using right now is the what head? The dragon head. He has a dragon and goat head. Okay, so I'm gonna disable the dragon head as soon as I. I, I uh, maybe it's too late. For, it's probably too late for the fire, but I'm gonna do it as soon as I, I can. Still take the 16 damage. Okay, you take 12 damage, but as the flames are billowing, you, you get behind a pillar, strap on the goggles. And you stare into the sun. Ka-chow! Ka-chow! And you, just just like your mentor taught you, and you can see, Darian, you're like charging in. The flames are getting hotter and hotter, almost too hot for your absorb element as you're getting closer and closer. The flames are just billowing in front of you. You are staring down the barrel of a real-ass dragon fire. And all of a sudden, a puff of smoke just goes in front of your face as the fire all of a sudden cuts out. And they're like, uh, burn! Burn! <laughs> Wait, what? What? What's going on? Dar- Darian, I have him under control. I, I'll, I, if I keep staring at him, he can't use his dragon head. I don't, I, I, I don't know why I haven't used this before. <laughs> <laughs> um... 
Seth, just because I don't know how we're classifying this in turn order here. Am I able to draw a weapon for an attack? Yep. Okay, I'm going to draw the samurai sword that we haven't had a chance to inspect yet. But I'm going to draw it. I'm going to activate the absorb element. Uh, like when you use it on your next attack, you release the elemental energy. Use my bonus action to release Planar Warrior and unleash two charged attacks with this uh, mystery samurai sword. It's cardboard. <laughs> and it, I absorb element was at level two, so it ups the damage as well. You're going to turn the fire back on the dragon. All right. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, so first attack uh, is an 18 to hit. 10 plus 8. Next one uh, is a 24 to hit. You draw your blade, the katana. You haven't opened it yet. You don't know if it's cursed. <laughs> nope. <laughs> could be bad. This could be bad, everybody. <laughs> you go to do two attacks. The, the katana slowly unsheaths, and as it does, Darian, you feel immediately as if woof, you are one with the blade. and woof, You are staring down the dragon head of King Veal. And you see the goat one just to the side of it go, Bleh! And you see, as you look at the goat head behind it, you're like, I didn't know there was another person there. And you see, it's another version of you, essentially doing the same movement as you. And it's meeting your eyes. It's like there's two Darians all of a sudden. And then you take it out and you go for the dragon head. The copy is going for the uh, goat head. And you go, choo -choo! you both do two attacks. Choo! And all of a sudden, you feel as though shh, you like blinked. And you can see you're behind King Veal now. And you can see both of King Veal's heads choo, fall to the floor. As you look back to see where you were originally standing and you don't see Darien anymore. And then you just are holding the katana as the heads choo, hit the floor. And the body falls what? Who, in front of you. Who gave this this stupid sword <laughs> to a centipede soldier? <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty legit if you knew their backstory. <laughs> he went out like a punk. <laughs> he got eaten by all those jellyfish things. Never mind, Darian. I'll just do nothing. <laughs> no, that, that was good. It allowed me to get in there and make the attack. Um... Hold on. Does the body fall down? It falls down. <laughs> well, does um, I I take a second, sheath the katana blade like all cool samurai like, and look over my shoulder. And is the green cylinder still active? Yeah, you can see it's still active. And you notice on the throne that you're standing next to now, uh, there is like two orbs. There's one green and one blue. The blue one seems locked in though. I'm I'm gonna try and unlock it. You try and it's not budging. It's it's an awkward angle, but it, it's it's not. Budging. I, I I hit the green one then. The cylinder force field goes away, and you can still hear the elevator descending. What? Zip save Apophis. Uh, uh I'm I'm trying. Uh, what do you want me to do? Wait, there's only the buttons. Oh, your your carpet. You can go down there. Um. Okay, uh, I don't know if it'll fit all of us. I guess I can go solo. Or you can just send it down by yourself. I mean, it'll obey your command. I know, but it's falling with the... With with the spider hawk. Oh, right. I guess we still gotta fight that guy. Well, we still have a chance to save Apophis. Just go. We're short on time. Okay, here I go. I jump. With the, with the carpet. Zhoo. The carpet sweeps underneath you. And you start heading down. And that's where we're going to take a break. Oh, my God. I'm coming, Apophis. Hey, everybody. Mid-roll Seth here with, guess what? A mid-roll for you. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the episode so far. I think it's pretty action-packed. And the second half is... 
probably more so, if you can believe it. Uh, this is the end of the Takul arc, so get excited for a little bit of a transition into the next arc uh, in the following episode on January 19th. Wow. I didn't need a calendar for once. I came prepared. Uh, yeah, January 19th is will be uh, the release of our next episode, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, thank you to everyone for supporting the show last year. We we grew so much, and it was seriously a crazy year uh, in more ways than one, obviously. But in terms of our podcast, I feel like we really grew, and this year we're going to be doing some crazy stuff as well. We got a huge musical on the way, uh, and by on the way, I mean months down the line because we've just started working on it, but it's going to be the biggest one yet. We're also probably going to start uh, selling some merch soon, so I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. And other 2021 goals are uh, get famous, I guess. <laughs> and you can help with that by sharing our stuff uh, from our social medias or telling your friends and family about it. For our social medias, you know, Twitter at Cheaper Dungeon, Facebook Cheaper by the Dungeon, Google Cheaper by the Dungeon, you'll find us. Uh, and also just, you know, listening and rating and reviewing us on iTunes. Those things actually really, really do help us get famous. So, yeah, we'd really appreciate it if you could drop us a review or a rating on, like, iTunes or Podchase or any of those. Uh, it really, really goes a long way, and we really appreciate it. Um, also, I should mention that if you want to, you know, join a little community where you can talk to fellow cheapskates like yourself and geek out about episodes and and talk with us, the cast, uh, we usually roam around not only our Patreon Discord, which you can get at the $2 tier, uh, where we run one-shots and, and have game nights and other cool stuff in that uh, community there, but also a free version of the community can be found on Reddit, r slash Cheaper by the Dungeon. So please go there if you want to, you know, discuss the episodes uh, like this one. Uh, and, you know, chat with cool people and, and make some new friends. So, yeah, those are two awesome places to go for community. Uh, other than that, uh, I think, oh, wait, I can't forget our legend tier patron, Randy. Of course, I got to shout you out. New Year, same Randy. Uh, <laughs> we love you, Randy. Thank you so much for your support at the legend tier. Uh, so happy to shout you out every time. And, yeah. I think that is everything. I think I covered it all. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out January 19th for the next episode, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this one. All right, take care, buddy. Oh, and Happy New Year! And we're back. And in a familiar situation, Zippy is magic carpeting down a dark cylindrical hole a la <laughs> second grand treasure. All good things happen when that happens. Um, Apophis! Zippy, you're, you're flying down and you can see Apophis. They're not super far down yet, but the elevator is still moving at a pretty rapid pace. And you can see Apophis is like duking it out and their body is bloody. Their arm is still like, you know, on the floor. Now he dropped it and there's blood gushing from it. And he's just going toe to toe. The tarantula hawk looks pretty beaten up too. Apophis isn't, is no joke. Um, and they're duking it out. And, and what do you do, Zippy? I, I moved the magic carpet closer to the wall. There's like, is it like a chain system that's moving this elevator? Yeah, there's like two uh, very small uh, like divots into the wall that have chains in them that you can see are like riveting. Okay. Uh, I move over to the chain closest to me while I'm falling as I'm on my surfing down on my carpet. And I touch the... Uh, T touch the stone wall close to where the chains are moving and I use stone shape on it and I create beams coming out to go into like the chains moving the elevator to, to stop the elevator sick that's Kuchuk. you can see it stops the chains immediately in their path as the stones just break it in and you can see the other side the other wall the chains are still going and the platform below is starting to tip it's starting to tip down and you can hear Apophis be like, Whoa! I'm steady ground, yo! <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> you must be protected. <laughs> Man, we need a <laughs> ringtone series of Apophis it's, phrases. It's starting to dip. Zippy, what do you do? Is the is the um spy the the trench of slipping as well? Yeah, they're like the whole platform is slipping, and they're both kind of like us, uh, like their feeding their feet are unsteady. And you can see the wings specifically on the trench lock. One of them's been damaged, so it can't fly out of here very easily. Okay, I jump off my carpet and I make the carpet go with me, and I'm falling down, and we're gonna aim for Apophis. Okay. <laughs> You're like free falling, and just before you hit Apophis, you want to like parachute. No, I want the carpet to grab him. Like, I go slide under under his feet and scoop him up, and then uh, go up up towards uh, the surface. You see, it scoops up and grabs underneath Apophis, and he's like, "Bro, whoa, whoa, freaking fuck, what?" Lonely, you little dude! You came! <laughs> I don't have much time to spawn to you because I'm falling! <laughs> Apophis, psh, on the magic carpet, starts flying upwards. And he's like, Little dude, no, you can't take him! Uh, and just as that happens, um, I, I, I move closer to the wall, and... Uh, I'm going to use spike growth, and I'm gonna cast it if you if you'll let me. I'm gonna cast it mm-hmm. like like how how wide is this pit here? What's the radius? Uh, it's it's about like 40 feet. It's pretty wide, but or sorry, that's the diameter. the The radius would be 20 feet. That's math. Hey, physicist, <laughs> look at me now. I studied. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna transfer transform into a, a bird and then fly up by myself as well, just like a normal ass bird. And I'm just gonna fly up. You see, you start transforming to a bird, and the trench lock is clawing into the platform that's like slowly tilting. And you see the tilting platform. The chain is like getting dragged and you can see beneath the platform and it's a dark, dark pit. And as you can see, like the darkness is shrouding over your emerald tattoo before you transform and you're free falling. You can see your emerald thing is just glowing. It just emits light. And you can see you transform into a bird, but the emerald still stays there and it's still emitting light. And you see beneath the ground, lots of green eyes in the pit oh God. start glowing underneath the platform and you can see the trench lock go no no and they're gonna try and throw sh- shoot one of their stingers from their arms just like uh, one of their blades and shoot it right at you i try to dodge bird zippy go for it roll decks <laughs> should have been like a, a giant eagle or something so you could take a hit <laughs> it's only but the the pit's only 20 feet wide actually i should be rolling to hit you mm-hmm. what am i doing what's your ac uh, AC is... Uh, and is it better than 17? No. Ooh. Well then. You see the stinger. You turn into a bird. It like pierces into you. Zippy, what's your bird HP? Probably not that great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it's like a one. And you took definitely slightly more than one. <laughs> oh, damn. He takes the rest of the damage as Zippy, eh? Yeah. You only take actually eighteen damage. <laughs> only over to top of one. I'm like almost dead. <laughs> yeah, I know it sucks. And you're falling now. You revert back to normal zippy, and you're falling in the pit. Cut to you, Darian and Norman. Apothis on the carpet comes out and lands on the palace floor and just goes, "Bros, little dudes in there." Let me get back out! And the carpet's like restraining him and pushing him back and like tying around his one arm and like dragging him away from the pit. He's like, let me go! I want to go in! I can do it! Apophis, if you go back in there, you'll make a sacrifice for nothing. Ha! Yeah, right! I'm gonna slam some stuff! <laughs> <laughs> um, in that time where Zippy had walked down or had jumped down, I would have run 
to, so I'm shouting at him because I would have run to King Veal's body to find the dragon fire. I would have ran to the pit to watch what's happening. You search King Veal's body looking for fire, and you can. The body is cold now, but the one place you can find heat is the dragon head. So I, I have a dragon. I have, I have a lion head, and I have a dragon head. Yeah, and you can grab the goat head if you want to complete your collection. Well, for a moment, <laughs> I kind of put them beside my head. And I'm like, look, I'm a hydra. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, the warmth is coming from. I'm going to open its mouth. Do I see anything inside? You see, there's a flame down deep in the throat that's like glowing. I'm going to say, let's see if the deep can handle this this flame. I'm going to reach in and take it out. You reach in. And it's burning your hand. It's very hot, Norman. Do you want to keep going? Or do you want to pull yeah, back? I, I mean, the damage can still be the same. I do have resistance to fire damage. Um, but my hand is going to go, like, it's going to start crackling obsidian black as I, as I pull it out. You feel, as it gets hotter, your hand's starting to burn, but you quickly, slowly shift into a demon-like state. And you grasp it in your hand, a closed fist, and it doesn't burn. You can handle the heat. It feels like nothing to you now. You can feel just a very slight warmth in your black obsidian hand. Interesting. And I'm going to stand up. Uh, Darian, having now seeing that Zippy's falling after just being struck, um, is going to call out to Norman and say, Norman, Zippy's falling and I've got nothing left. Oh! All right, and I, I run back. You see, yeah, Zippy's falling, and the platform is tilting, and you see lots of green eyes below. I I take the two shots at the tarantula hawk to stop him from trying to hit Zippy again, hopefully giving him a moment. Okay. Only one of those arrows hit, um, so uh, damage total damage on that is only eight. Okay. You shoot down, and you hear... They're clawing into the, the, the platform that's pretty much like vertical now um, with a chain like loosely dragging from below. Um, and you can see that they're hanging on with the claw and you shoot the arm and they just scream as their grip loosens and they're falling into the pit. So th- this is all kind of happening in bullet time. Like Zippy is still falling down the shaft. I I'm ima- I'm imagine he's like almost at the bottom. Yeah. And Apophis is screaming, Let me in! Let me in! And you hear Draken at your side, Darian. Kid, normally I'm averse to danger. But for some reason, I want you to decide what you do here. Um, every ounce of my body is saying run, but you need to decide. Seth, when, when we first saw into the pit and we saw those weird green eyes, I would have activated... Like my planar sense to detect portals. Does it feel like that bottom of this pit opens to another plane? You, how far is that reach? Like a couple miles. Yeah, you can sense way down <laughs> deep. There's not a portal, not a plane, but a door to somewhere you have no idea. It it does not seem planar at all. Hmm. But there is like some sense of special reality bending magic way down deep not not where the green eyes are but deeper I am going to grab the chain on the side platform and I want to do like the cool action hero thing where you kind of like jump down while holding the chain to kind of like slow your pace okay so, so I'm not free falling but I'm, I'm sliding down the one that's like not moving or the one that's moving because I stopped the one chain uh, I, yeah, I guess the one with, that's not moving. So I can at least stop at the platform if I make it that far. You hear, Darian, as you're just sliding down, you hear Dragon just say, Wait, what? Kid, that was just a test! No! <laughs> I, I'm i going to keep sliding. I'm not going to, like, free fall, but, like, I, I, I want to at least make it to the platform. Because, like, Zippy shows no sign of, like, flying or anything, right? No, he's like still falling. It's not my turn yet. Well, yeah. So I'm just I'm gonna just slide as far as I can. I don't know if that brings you to the bottom or not. Trust your instinct, Connor. Just jump to me. 
<laughs> and Norman, you're you're still just gonna chill up there with Apothis? No, I'm I'm not gonna slide down, but I'm gonna start. I'm not a, like a ninja. I'm gonna start climbing down the rope as fast as I can. Okay. Yeah, you start a rope and you start climbing down. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say to Apophis, make sure no one comes in here. That's your job. And I'm gonna start going. No, down. I want to go down there. But the the magic carpet like wraps around him and is like pulling him back. He's like, come on! And he's still fighting it. But the magic carpet's like, no. That's a good carpet. Zippy, you're falling, and with your night vision. You can see the floor is about 30 feet away from you. And you can see all the green eyes all of a sudden disappear. And it's like they like just run away into the shadows. And you land or you're falling. You're very close to the floor. The tarantula lock is, is just like to your left falling at the same speed. And how far am I from Darian? Darian's like probably like 80 feet above you. And how far is the platform? Uh, the platform is, uh, it's like 40 feet above you. Oh, you're plummeting, dude. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, I'm going to shout out to, to Darian. I'm going to speak, Darian! And then I'm going to have a flashback of all the times I spent with Darian. And... The good times, the bad, the times where we had to, you know, become more of a team even when Normandy wasn't there. And it's, uh, I I feel like I just don't, Zippy does feel like he's going to hit the ground. And then through the power of remembering Darian here, Zippy unlocks something inside himself. Something in his circle of dreams. Zippy teleports all the way up to the platform above with his hidden paths ability, which it can go to 60 feet, and I grab the top of the platform there. And then I look up at Darian as I have just teleported up there. Uh, Darian! What just happened? It's you! You came to get me? Of course I did. I would never leave you behind. I'm almost there, guys. I'm coming. <laughs> no, man, you too. I'm going to slip, Darian. I, um... Darian, make sure you grab Zippy. He's slipping there. How far am I from the platform? Uh, you, uh, are just 40 feet away from it now. Okay, does it look like he's slipping? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep sliding down. I just, no, I just he, want to know... He's holding on to it now. He's holding on to the platform. He's, like, at the upper lip of it, and he's holding on tightly. I'm slipping! <laughs> I, I'm gonna uh, slide down the rest of the way and, and grab him with my other free hand. You slide down, reach out an arm, you grab him, pull him up to you. Alright, hold on tight. But before you do anything, you hear spoof! <laughs> the tarantula hawk is screaming. And then. <laughs> And then you hear some kind of like roars. And they're like, Inara, I've, I've come, come to slay you. I have the power. The flower, flower will, will give me the power. Please. And then you hear, it's like something snaps. And you can see a blue glow coming from down below. And you see, you can all see now because the blue glow is emanating from the blue flower tattoo on their back. And the thorns are emanating from it, like wrapping around. You can see they're actually extending out of the body now. Like where the wing, the broken wing was, it's like stretching out and replacing it. And you hear their neck crick. And they're staring up at you all. And you hear a voice emanate from the tarantula hawk that's not normal. And you just hear, Oh. So now that's where you three have been hiding. You son of a bitch. 
No free Well, way. one of my roots was telling me that they found something interesting, but whoo, boy. I did not think it would be you. But here we are. Now, gentlemen, I'm gonna make this quick. Hand over your grand treasure clue. Their whole body stance has changed. It's like they've been possessed by Lou Blonger. What? Guys, we have to go. I'm quickly climbing down the chain to get to them. Guys! Guys! We gotta go up. Now. Oh, oh wait. Wait. Wait, wait! wait, wait, wait! You see a bee swordsman flies over top of the pit and you hear a button hit and woof, the emerald barrier is restored at the top. Now, boys, I know we are on opposite sides of the spectrum when it comes to morals and ideals. And while that infuriates me, I am not concerned with that right now. What I am concerned with is that you still have that grand treasure clue in your possession. The scale. From the tower. You stole. Now I am not going to mess around with you lot any longer regarding this issue. Nor am I going to try and convince you to see things the right way. My way. So what are we going to do, fellas? You going to come down here? Or force me to come up there to you. How far am I from the platform, Seth? Uh, you're about forty feet. You're a little slower, but you can get there pretty quick. Man, I uh, feel like oh. I feel like couldn't we just dimension door past the green thing? As long as it doesn't block magic, but I've got no spells left. I I cannot take everyone. Um, I can probably use my hidden pass to get everyone through it. Well, first, let, let me climb to the bottom. I'm going to... Just because well, I, is, I can't really talk plan with you guys. If Yeah, um, what is... Like, Jacob, what, is, what does Zippy say to Darian in this moment, then? As we're hanging on this chain. I keep climbing down, DM, as, as fast as I can. We can't, guys. Guys, we have to get back to Apophis, even though... This is a trap. There's nothing. This it's all been. We've been pushed and pushed to this point right here. I I I don't I don't feel good about this. We have to get back up top. I think you're right. I think there's something else more foul going on down there. He's he's been searching for us, like he said. It's just it's not. It, it, I I just I don't feel right about going down there. I agree. Hold on tight. I'm gonna start climbing. And with Zippy on my back, I'm gonna start climbing back up the chain as, as fast as I can. Oh, my chain's moving! <laughs> oh. Norman, we gotta get out of here. I think that's just... You're... That's a honeypot. There's something else there. He's trying to bring us into the pit. You're starting to climb and climb. And he goes, So you're not coming down? Alright. Suit yourself! And he flies like a rocket. And you can see the thorns have like enforced this body. It, this tarantula hawk looks like way beefier. It just like ripped. Like Apophis, but not as toned. And they're flying now right next to you as you're all holding onto the chain. And you can see there's like four stingers coming out of each like side of their forearm. And they just have these four blades extending. They're like. Last chance! Easy way or hard way, fellas! Uh, DM, how how far are we away from the entrance? Uh, you're about, like, 30 feet. You only climb, like, 10 feet in that time. It's hard to climb. I, um... I immediately reach to my hip, pull out my wand of webs, and shoot it at its wings. And go, you tell me! And, uh, cast the web spell. Um... Uh, so, yeah, I... I'm going to touch Norman, and I'm going to attempt to use my new Hidden Paths uh, ability on him, which allows me to open a magical pathway and I, that the Fae use, and I can 
send people through. Um, I can teleport a willing creature up to... You said it was 30 feet away, Seth? Mm-hmm. That's perfect, because I can only do it up to 30 feet with another Hold on, person. no. I'm not... No, I'm not leaving not, you guys here. I send him. Zip! You land just outside the barrier, Norman. <laughs> and you can see a bee swordsman just has their hand on the green shield button. Before you do anything, Lou Tarantula Hawk goes, Oh, you can't be serious. You're, You're trying to run away again? again. I'm not letting it happen twice. As you see Norman zips away, you cast the web, and Lou Tarantula Hawk just goes, Oh, trying to run away again. Come on. Um, a 19 on their save for the web. I think that does it, right? <laughs> yes, that does. You can hear the smile in Seth's voice right there. He does. The web tries to slap onto their wings, but it hits the wall behind, and they go, Oh, come on. Petty tricks ain't working on me. And they fly towards you, going to slash you, the chain, and everybody there. 23 to hit. You see they come to slash, and they go slashing at you, Zippy and Darian. Shift! And you just see whoosh, the claws like serrate up the wall, and you see it ripples onto the barrier up top. It's like it just slashes all the way up, and you each take a thirty-three damage. Holy! Yeah, I'm unconscious now. I grab Zippy with my reaction so he doesn't fall. You reach out, grab Zippy, and you just are holding onto the chain with one arm, and Zippy's just dangling there, unconscious now. Connor, how much health do you have left? Uh, Don't you have to tell me? Is it less than six? No. Okay, that healing potion it was useless. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean every everything counts. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna use my action to cast cure wounds at third level on Zippy, bring him back to consciousness. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 14 points of health. Okay. So he's conscious at that point. And uh, I want to use my movement to bring us closer to the barrier. Okay. You're climbing up slowly. It's going to be half your movement, which is what? Uh, normal movement is 30, so it's 15 feet. So we're 15 feet from the barrier. 15 feet away. Zippy, you're awake now and climbing too. Norman, you're at the top. Zippy, I'm gassed. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to start walking straight towards the throne, and I'm going to open my... I'm, I'm going to pull out the dragon fire. I'm going to say, now's not a good time. And I'm just going to point it at this hornet dude as I walk towards him. You open your hand and the little flame flickers and poof, it's just flames exude out. And you're like funneling it with your demon hand towards them. Uh, please roll. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, please, please roll 4d12. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Roll high. <laughs> uh, 23 points of fire damage. They're like burning alive, and, but they're still standing there holding on to the throne as you see a blue flower on their shoulder is like holding their hand on the buzzer. Okay. Zippy, you're there dangling on the chain. Wow. This is tricky situation I'm gonna give as much time as I can I'm gonna use wall of stone it's my fifth level spell and <laughs> it's gonna create a solid wall of stone springs into existence at a point you choose within range it's 120 feet the wall is six inches thick and uh, it can't it's a uh, 10 feet by 10 feet is composed of 10 foot by 10 foot panels. So I, I, uh, I'll turn you can create a 10 foot by 20 foot panels. I, I basically just want to cover the whole thing as like a plate over it, blocking the spider between me and Darian. Amazing. Right. And then, but then as a bonus action, as a bonus action, I'm going to send Darian up past the, the wall with my, with my circle of dreams. Zippy, wait! Zippy, he's you gone freaking now. idiot. 
<laughs> Zip! <laughs> Darian, you land up there, and you can see Apophis is still being restrained by the carpet, and he's like, Bro! Please! Let it call this thing off! And you see Norman there fighting with the flames on the bee soldier that's holding desperately onto the throne. And Zippy, you cast, and a stone wall shunk, slams from either side of the pit and blocks the path between you and Lublonger. And you just hear you see your claws digging in. <laughs> oh, God. And you just hear muffled on the other side. Well, I, I have to applaud your tenacity, but you know, Zippy, I only did really want to get you anyways. <laughs> the stone wall breaks, and they're going to attack you. <laughs> what? And they... What is your AC? 16. 14 does not cut it. They go (laughs) slamming through and the rocks like fly everywhere. And I guess they misjudged where you were on the other side of the wall. And their claw digs into the wall. All like eight of them from their two arms. And Zippy, you can see they just missed. They have two of their arms on the left of you, two on their arms on your right. And you're literally like staring right in the face of the tarantula hawk. Because they just missed with their knives thinking you were there you are literally like two feet away from their chest and they're just breathing heavily down on you this big tarantula wasp like face darian and norman you're up top darian what are you gonna do as the flames are beating down on this bug um if it looks like the bug is still standing i am gonna lay into him with uh with two arrows Um, and activating my planar warrior because now I'm just hoping Zippy's going to be able to teleport through in a sec as well. And so I don't want the green barrier to drop so we can keep the mosquito hawk in there. So I don't want the bee to touch it anymore. Okay. So roll to hit. Uh, It's a 19. That hits. And oh, that's uh, only a 13. Roll damage. What'd you roll? Like a negative five? Uh, six. <laughs> um, does a 13 hit? Uh, no, 13 okay. doesn't. Okay, well, so Planar Warrior is still getting activated on this. So that's still going to be, uh, still only eight damage total. But it's force damage. And that's your bow? Yes. So he gotta make a, he's got to make a con save for blindness if he's alive. So, you shoot and do eight damage. They fail their con save. And you can see that from the black bow, like dark mist goes over their eyes and the force damage knocks them back. Their hand is removed from the buzzer, but the, the shield, the force field is still going. You have to turn it off, but the hand's away and they've been knocked back. Norman, what are you doing? The force field's gone? No, it's still up, but the buzzer is free. Their hand's not on it anymore. Okay, I, I if it's within 10 feet of me uh, or whatever, I guess it doesn't matter, I book it towards it to turn it off because I don't know Darian's plan. I'm trying to remove it so I can go back in there. And I run and I flip the switch. Norman, wait! We, we have to save Zip! And I I hit the switch. Wait. No! <laughs> I, I hit the switch. That's what Norman would do. Oh, I said wait. No! You! The forest field is gone. Zippy, you are staring right down the barrel of this tarantula hawk. You can see from their blue tattoo all these vines that have encircled their body and you can see new blue flowers just blossoming on those like thorny vines. What do you do? Um, I am going to pull out my flame blade from long ago and I'm going to do a slash across the chest. So yeah, Zippy is like glaring up at Lou Blanca's weird spider tarantula <laughs> cock form. And Zippy's pissed. He's like glaring up. And then from where you would unsheath the samurai sword, he sheaths the fiery blade and does a cut right across the chest. That's kind of like a fuck you type of thing. 
<laughs> and <laughs> and uh, the target takes three d6 damage. I'm. It's more of just like a like a screw you type of thing, Lou. And uh, I'll roll to hit. That is a, a 23. You hit. Please roll damage. Which which is just which is just seven damage. Okay. You draw the flame. What do you say as you slice him up with your flame blade? It's good seeing you, Lou. <laughs> but it's time we part again. And next time, <laughs> we're gonna be coming after you. And then I slash him. And as soon as the slash is done, I don't even give him a chance. I immediately use my last hidden pass. And I teleport right beside the button. And I slam it down with my fist. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> right beside Norman. Oh, I just opened that for you. Oh, oh you're, you're here. <laughs> you zip away after cutting loop longer and they just go Ugh! come on now it ain't that easy and they start flying up and you hit the buzzer and they they knock their face on the force field and they're like come on and they start slamming their their swords their sword arms in to the barrier and you can see the barrier's like bending a little it's bubbling out as the the ends of their eight sword arms just it's like forcing it out it's like bending slowly but you see the green is like flashing and then they recoil and hit their back on the other side of the barrier as they get thrown back because they couldn't break through and you can see the the ceiling of the castle there's like an emerald uh, like symbol of a snake on the top too. It like cracks and crumbles from the force of them hitting the other side of the barrier wall. And it cracks and this emerald symbol falls and falls down the pit. And as you can see, as it gets down the pit and starts um, starts falling into the darkness, it starts glowing very vibrantly. Vibrantly green. And you can see they hit their back on the wall and they're like, come on! And they dive and they're piercing their swords again and they're bending closer. They're like stretching out. They're actually like making some leeway right to the throne room where you're holding the buzzer, Zippy. Norman, you're there. And Darian, you're watching as well. And Apophis is like, bro. And they're like bending and stretching the force field, reaching out. And they're like, come on, Zippy. Come on. You can't hide from me no more. Someone needs to do something. <laughs> and Please. it's bending and bending. And you hear... <laughs> you see coming up the pit, the two... Sl- chomping down on Lou Blonger's tarantula body. Poof. You see coming up is this large head of a snake. With this white skin color. And black and orange spots with these two like long whiskers coming off their snake face, like like uh, a giant long mustache, and they have this kind of like four-legged body that's clawing into the walls, and it's massive. And you can see it is a koi bra. It's like a koi fish mixed with a giant cobra, and it slams down, and you can hear Lou's voice cut out and gulp and you can see their eyes are like these black glossy that reflect like green light and you can see the other bug that was hit by the arrow even though they're blind you can see they're freaking out and terrified and you see breaking through the barrier now stretching it and the barrier starts like breaking and tearing as this large quibra's claws are breaking through you are all standing there watching as it's slithering out of this tunnel. And we're going to go into a skill check challenge. About to run, boys, run! Wow. Oh. Amazing. I am not in any position to run. Neither am <laughs> but I. But I still have freedom of movement on. 
It lasts an hour. And by the way, Seth, I just want to clarify. Like, it, is it clear to us, or do we still not know? They just refer to this Koibra as Ganala. Like, this is not the god Ganala. Do you don't know? You don't know. You it don't know that much. A, what's it called? A tether to Ganala. Like, I, I would. I don't know if I have a time. Realistically, I don't. I don't know if I. No time for history check. You got to run, man. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Someone pick up a boffist, Darian or Norman. He's in your carpet. Oh, yeah. What about the chameleon, dude? Yeah, He's screw that guy. Person. I'm going to pick you up, Zippy, because uh, you're, like, almost dead, right? Yeah, pick me up, please. Yeah. Zip, come on. I got you. All right, pick him up. Darian, you good? <laughs> Darian, is that you? You look so different. <laughs> <laughs> now you really blended in with the walls. I thought you were a statue. Let's go. Everybody run. You are all sprinting. Apophis is fl- flying on the magic carpet. It's like, bros, I can walk. Z- Zippy, you take the carpet. Uh, oh, do you want to do that? Will it make my skill? Do I get advantage on the skill check? No, they're just asking. They're just offering. Don't risk Apophis. Yeah, he's he's playing strong, but I am going to ask the carpet to, while it's flying with us and running, scoop up his arm. We might need to attach it. <laughs> Zoop, scoops it up and he's like, yo, oh, sick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you guys are still flying fast, and you guys are all running as this koi bear. You see, as it's like slithering out, you see out of the side of the pit another head of a koi bear oh. is coming oh, out. No. Two koi bras. You are running. I want everybody first here. What are you gonna do to add on to your uh, skill check here? You can add like acrobatics, just flavor it. But you gotta run. Add it now. I, do I have to? Because because Normandy's kind of carrying me. Uh, well, you might want to do something to make it easier for him. <laughs> um, <laughs> I cheer him on. I will say, Zippy, if you just want to keep like helping him and cheering on together, I will just uh, give uh, Normandy proficiency on his bonuses, and he can do all the rolling. But you'll be attached to him, so if he fails, you fail. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, we will start with Darian. Uh, Darian is com- completely out. He doesn't have any more natural abilities and he's completely out of spells so he's just going to uh dig deep with whatever stamina he has left and just lean on his athleticism to to carry him through and he's just gonna look down to draken and be like all right hold on draken as he's bouncing around in his little jar kid oh man yeah kid move but uh, like cap the lid i don't want to lose my water sorry uh, 13 plus 8, uh, 21. Okay, yeah, you succeed. You're running, holding on, and just booking it out of the castle. The columns on the side are collapsing and shattering as a third Koibra is coming out of the pit. And the front one is just chasing you all, and the other two are, like, backing up, slamming into the pit. This, How many snakes are in this can? All right, Norman. Okay, if we... Norman, oh, wait. Can I give him something before it? Sure. Norman, <laughs> I can help you. And I put my hand on him, and I I activate Cat's Grace on him. It gives him advantage on dexterity checks, and also allows him to fall 20 feet without getting damaged. What? All right, I'll give him <laughs> advantage on these rolls then. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, the strength of yogurt is in my bones, and I'm going to run. And as soon as we come to, like, a collapsed part of the floor, like a descending staircase, I'm going to say, hold on, Zip. And I'm going to do basically that misty flip down the stairs where basically you're basically just doing a backflip, but down forward down the stairs to land at the bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm just going to do that. And I might as well add a 360 to that. I'm just spiraling as I do it. Um, Okay. 18 plus 7, 25. Yeah, you're good. You flip and land, and you just hear off in the distance. Nice! And uh, <laughs> you are running and running still. Next phase is going to be harder now. You see a fourth Koibra and a fifth Koibra are coming out of the pit. The They're, like, hell? filling in this throne room and brr, 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 slamming into the columns. The front one is chasing you down. They are massive, by the way. And they're slithering. The face is going to try and bite at you, Darian. You're, like, right in front there, and they're reaching over their neck, and they're going to bite down on you. How do you want to dodge? 
Uh, I'm I'm gonna wait until the last second so it's really committed to the strike, and then I'm going to like do a quick like dive somersault and get back to my feet to keep running, uh, but be able to get out of his way. Okay, roll. And sorry, would that be dexterity or ath- uh, athletics? Roll a d20, and you can add whatever skill you want. That's the point of the skill challenge. We are sticking <laughs> with these athletics. We are literally. Like, this castle is, like, most likely the body of a freaking hydra right now. Like, this, like, the head of ten different snakes on this thing. Guys. Oh, God. I think there's a million of those things. Guys. Darian, what? You need to listen to this. It's a natural one. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Ooh, Darian. You feel, you try to dodge, but it nips your leg, and you feel it bite down, oh, and you God. take... 35 damage as it chomps down on your leg and you can feel your star metal bracer that's around your leg that's been protecting your like blue flower containing it that's on your leg just start to you hear a little crack nothing shatters but you hear a crack on it Uh, well it doesn't matter um, because I'm unconscious and you roll unconscious in front of Darian and Zippy Darian Zippy you're going Apophis is still on the carpet ahead of you guys he's like Yo! Man down! Man down! And you see a second Koibra coming over top of the first one in this thin <laughs> hallway. It's just slithering through this hallway, and it's going to claw down with a giant hand and try and slam on you, Darian and Zippy. Norman and Zippy. Yeah, Norman and oh, Zippy. Well, yeah, right. Norman and okay. Zippy. Okay. I am going to use Minor Illusion just to make a visceral image of, like, a, like a ferocious... Um, just like a five foot square of like an owl with talons, like a, sh- a giant owl with talons reaching towards this cobra because owls prey on snakes. And I'm going to try to make it flinch so we can go and pick up Darian's body with the carpet or something. Okay. Okay. Roll. I'm going to use intimidation if that's cool with you. Yep. <laughs> Zippy, heal me, please. Eight plus 13, <laughs> Don't. 21. Don't leave me. You make illusory versions of yourself and poof, it misses and you are just uh, running forward. You see Darian's on the ground. Uh, he's rolled to the side and his leg looks bloody and he's just out cold and you can hear a pop up ahead. Just be like, bros, come on. I gotta get off this thing. I gotta help. Please. I'm not helpless. I feel so useless. <laughs> Zip, let a pop run. Let the carpet carry Darian. You hear Draken just go, kid, wake up. Come on, kid. Uh... I mean, I can do that, but I can also attempt to heal him. But I don't know if it's, heal he'll me. have to like get. <laughs> he'll have to like get up though. If he if he's prone, he's gonna have half movement. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. You have five seconds to decide. Oh, ah! Five. <laughs> uh, let's start. Let's four, do the carpet for now, three. and then I can try to heal him while he's on the carpet. So, uh, uh, above is get off the carpet, run! But we'll leave his arm on the carpet, and I'll scoop up <laughs> Darian instead. <laughs> Scoops up Darian, and, and Apophis falls off, and he lands on his back. He's like, yo, bros, sick. All right, let's go. And he starts slithering, and, oh, and he falls. He's like, guys, I'm gassed. Oh my <laughs> you no. know what? Uh, no. Guys, oh. yo, this is super embarrassing. But, like, I've reached my limits, maybe? Do I have those? The only limits you have are in your mind, Apophis. The carpet swoops down and picks up Darian and moves. But, Norman, what do you want to do? I want to give him my last bardic inspiration, and I'm going to say, Apophis, shed the skin of doubt. Yo, that's kind of weird. Shedding skin's like like stripping, dude. Well, you're a snake. I thought it would be appropriate. Well, it's not. <laughs> but okay. And he starts, like, picking himself. He's like, come on. What? One slither after the other. Come on! And you're catching up very quickly, uh, Norman and Zippy. And a third one is like piling in. It's like slamming its way through over top of the other two. And it's going to, again, launch a bite at you guys. You are so close to the castle exit out this hallway. You can see the doors are open. You can see Takul is out there. And you can hear like clashing of swords and chaos as the insectoids were fighting the Takul people. And you are running. What are you going to roll? 
Norman, you're carrying Zippy. Apophis is slithering slowly up ahead. I have nothing. Okay, well, I'm gonna just try to. I'm just gonna run. And I just, I just realized now that I do not have a free hand. I only have one working hand, and I'm carrying Zippy. Yep. Wow. Okay. I am just gonna keep running and just try to nim- nimbly dodge these strikes with acrobatics. Roll. Yeah. Okay. So Zippy, thank you for Cat's Grace. I rolled a one and an eleven. So eleven plus seven, eighteen. Nice. Okay. You are running. You have Zippy under your arm. You're both limping. Apophis is like slowly slithering up ahead. They're wounded badly. You can see the other one bite down and sinks into the floor. It kind of lifts the stone floorboards and you go, whoa, flying in the air. And you land and roll with Zippy on the ground. And Apophis too. And he's like, you're all just lying on the ground. And Darian is flying out on the carpet. Zippy. And Norman and Apophis, you all look up and you see this hallway that's literally just piled up with these Coibra snakes. You see the walls are collapsing. You can hear other parts of the castle just falling in on itself as you've unleashed basically Pandora's box or Ganala's box, apparently. And you look out the other side and you can see all the fighting is like slowly coming through the hall. People are fighting the insectoids still. And you can hear in the distance, like, get the blue pills! Get the blue pills! It's the only way to fight back! Oh, no. And people are fighting, but then you hear one of the Quabers in the hallway step over all the ones that are piled and burst through. It is staring down. They plant both their hands at either side of you, Norman, Zippy, and Apophis. And their head is outstretching out of this castle. And they're not looking down at you. They're looking out. And they just let out a large roar. And all the insectoids look. And they're all like shaking. And some are like, let's fight, let's fight. And then you just see it goes. And it spits out this half digested body of the tarantula hawk king. Out. And you can see all the insectoids just go, oh, shit. <laughs> and they go, Fzz. they're starting to buzz away. But the basically the Koibras see all their food escaping. And they're stampeding. And you see the feet are just pounding next to you. They're stomping over top of you. Norman, Zippy, Apophis, and Darren, who's flying and pretty safe. <laughs> You see all these feet are stomping. How are you going to dodge this stampede that's plowing out of this castle? I'm going to float. Zippy and Norman, you each have to roll for this one. I'm just going to try to dodge it the best I can. This is flat out dexterity save. Um, Even with advantage, the best I got was a six. Six plus seven, 13. Should I take a death save failure? Uh, Yeah, Darren, you can do a death save. And Seth, if it's okay with you for flavor, I'm going to say that I threw Zippy out of the way, which is why I rolled so bad. Okay. I have one success, by the way. I had a seven. And I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't have any magic left to do, so. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, it's a minus one, though, so it's like a six. Oh, no. Okay. Are you also out of, out of spells? Yeah, I'm like, the only spells I can do are not useful right now. Just, just hold on to those spells for heals, man. <laughs> Yeah, I have healing stuff I can do, but... This stampede is slamming. Zippy, you're trying to dodge, but one clamps down slowly on your torso, and you feel your ribs cracking. And Norman, you're reaching out and push Zippy away, and it slams on your arm. You each take only 26 damage. Ah! Yeah, but I'm unconscious again. Zippy got trampled, and he's unconscious by the Cobra Cobra Stampede. Norman, what about you? I'm not unconscious. I'm bloody. And... Pull out your super move. You hear Apophis reach out to you, Zippy, and grab your ears, but you're unconscious, and they yank you to their side with their one arm, and they're like, Little dude! You too! And they, like, put a sling... Zippy over their arm, their shoulder, because they successfully dodged. They grab your hand, Norman, 
even though it's probably burning and hurting, and you're still holding tight to the flame of the dragon. And you, he pulls you up to your feet, and he's like, Guys, we gotta run! And you see just more feet are stampeding and coming, and a wall of Koibra is unleashing upon you. And you just hear gallops of horses and a wagon screech in front, uh, right behind Apophis. And Darian, just as this wagon comes out, your magic carpet, because it, it can't work without Zippy's commands, it kind of like curls back up. And you drop and land right in front too, right next to Apophis. And Norman and Apophis and da- unconscious Zippy and Darian, you turn around as the feet are just like stomping over top, somehow missing the cart for now. But the door flings open. And you see a familiar face in a blue bathrobe with moons and stars. And they go, hey, guys, yes. I thought you'd like to buy some stuff. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell is going on here? What, what are you doing out there? Just come in, come in. Man, I, th- I, I push Apophis in. I grab Darian, throw him in. Zippy is with Apophis. And I say, we're all yours. And I, I jump in. And you hear the horses get whipped magically and start riding away and the door shuts and you're all just lying on the floor bloody with arms and everything and unconscious and he's like yeah wow talk about good timing (laughs) damn but anyways want to buy anything and that's where we're gonna end the episode (laughs) oh Oh, my gosh